Okay, the mail came today and my Hammond chassis came in and this is a five by nine by two steel chassis. Um, it's got a nice little ledge on the bottom of it that gives it a lot of strength. They're welded in the corners and this is a really strong, you know, this is a really strong little chassis. I I've read some places that say that you shouldn't make chassis out of steel. And I've built, this will be my third amplifier that I've built with a steel chassis. And I haven't had any hum problems or inductance being transferred through the chassis. I feel that a lot of that is more theoretical than anything that happens in actual use. And these steel chassis are so much stronger that I use them simply because of that fact. They're a little harder to machine and cut holes in and stuff like that than the aluminum ones, but they don't dent, they don't ding. These are uh, pre-powder coated with a really nice finish on them and you end up with a really nice looking amplifier. One of the things I do want before I start is I look to see if either the front or the back looks like it has a little smoother finish because that's the side you're going to see. And on this one, the front does look, this looks a little smoother finish than the other side. So we're going to make this the front. And the first thing we want to do is we want to lay out our transformers and we're going to drill the holes and mount them and run the wires through the chassis. The transformers are something that there's really not a lee lot of leeway on as far as where we put them. And so you have to kind of work around where you mount the transformers with the rest of the components. So the output transformers are going to go like this. And then the power transformer is going to go over in this corner like this. And I like to line up the back edge of the transformer with the back edge of the chassis. And as you can see, when you look down here, there's these are on a slot. So there is some movement back and forth this way, and you can twist them around a little bit to get them lined up like you want. There's not much movement this way. So you wanna make sure you get this location on these two transformers really close. And then I like the center of this bobbin to be on the center of the laminate just cause it looks nicer. And it gives you a little extra room in the back here for the wiring in. And this connector where we plug the power wire in, which has an integrated place for a fuse right here. So once we get the transformers where we think we're going to have them, get this one as close to the edge as I can. Try to have a little gap in between these two. And that gives us a little extra gap between the power transformer and the output transformer. So then I get a little screwdriver like this that's got a sharp bit on it and I mark the center of this hole in the powder coating about halfway down. And this is one of these things where I like just directly marking them Obviously, you could try to measure, but I found that by directly marking them right in the middle of the slot, you have a lot less problems with marking stuff wrong because you're using the actual component that you're going to be mounting to measure where the hole's going to be. And we'll mark the hole for the wires after we drill 
the mounting holes for the transformers. So now I'm going to mark, and this is the power transformer. This powder coating is pretty tough. It takes a it takes a pretty sharp screwdriver to make the mark that the little nick mark that we want to put where the button head screws are going to be. And I'll show you the hardware I use to mount transformers to the chassis that I think looks really nice. I'm not much on, um, some people like chrome. I think black screws look better on a black chassis. But again, the screw colors and stuff is your personal preference. You may, you may want to use brass and, and go for that look. And obviously, you can paint these transformers in bells or the output transformer in bells, different colors, if you want to do that. They are, the Ed Core ones are powder coated from the factory, which makes them harder to paint over. You really need to really scuff up that powder coating well if you're going to try to paint over the top of it. And, and I double check to see if the holes look like they're in the center. And this one right here is off just a little bit. It needs to be more like right there. And do the last little double check here. And make sure all four holes look like they're close to the center. And they look like they are. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to cut some pieces of wood. And I have a piece of you know, some kind of cloth here so it doesn't so it doesn't scratch up my powder cutting. You want a, some pieces of wood that'll fit inside here like this. So that it'll support the back side of this metal while you're center punching and while you're drilling it. So, and you want it to stick up above like that. And then you kind of get it down in the corner here. So we can mark these holes. Okay. I just, I get a nail and sharpen it at a lot flatter angle than a normal nail would be on a bench grinder. And it really, it makes a nice little center punch tool. So we're going to mark our first hole back here in this corner and you can use a small hammer you don't want to hit this very hard so you want something pretty light I just use this little pair of dikes and it doesn't take much of a little dimple there to guide the drill bit and I mark all four holes You don't want to hit this too hard. You can put a big dent in the top of this. And if you don't have it supported from underneath with the wood, it absolutely will put a dent that's larger than the hole you're going to be drilling. Okay, now we got to drill over. We want to work on this corner over here. And so we shake the wood over into that corner. And we mark 
these four holes. And I think I want it about right there. Okay. Now, I look back, I put the thing back on, and double check. It's the old saying, measure once, or measure twice and cut once. You want to make sure the center of those center punches are in the center of each of these holes. Because right now we can move the center punch hole fairly easily. But once you drill the hole, it's drilled. And these holes are underneath these little feet. Or these little lugs and so if you if you miss a little bit this isn't a super precision thing if you miss a little bit it's not the end of the world you can get a little file or a little drill tool and and you know oval shape the hole just a little bit and to get it to fit right and like I said it's not the end of the world so the first thing you want to do is get a small drill bit, something around like a 330 seconds, and drill a pilot hole for every one of these holes. 